Okay. Um, so yeah, so the title of this talk is uh, Designing a Theorem Prover Prover. I'm going to explain what that is. Um, so the idea here is to prove the correctness of a real theorem prover down to a machine code implementation. Um, I emphasize the word real here uh, because it's really something that uh, we can actually connect to um, the, the ones that have been used with the big libraries, those sorts of theorem proofs, that's, that's the goal. Um, this project more specifically is going to define a formal specification, which is called MetaMath0, uh, to write a verifier that takes a specification and certifies that it's provable using an auxiliary input, which is this uh, proof file. And then we prove the correctness of the verifier. Okay. Um, so how, how do you do that? Uh, well, first of all, you can define, um, uh, you can specify the axioms of uh, piano arithmetic. This uh, project's gonna be working inside piano arithmetic for the most part, uh, the uh, MM0 formal system, and the execution semantics of uh, some machine code, uh, in this case, uh, x86 inside MM0. And then you have um, a verifier uh, machine code V, and I'll get back to how we get this V. Um, and then we write down the statement, well, if I run V on some MM0 file uh, T, and it returns with success, then T is derivable. You take that entire statement and you write it down uh, as a MM0 file. Uh, and, and you can gloss that statement as V is correct. And just to emphasize here, um, the reason we define MM0 is so that we can state the words MM0 file and derivable, and the execution of sem semantics of machine code is used in defining what it means to run machine code. Now we can run uh, V on that file for real this time, and observe that uh, the result is a success, meaning that, in fact, this statement is true. And so we will have self-verified that way. Now, there are some problems with this. First of all, how do we get V? Um, how do we get this, this piece of machine code that's supposed to do the verification? Um, uh, and also, this, is the, this has to be the same V that is appearing inside the statement uh, V is correct. Um, and then how do we convince V to accept the statement three? Uh, that is gonna somehow require some proof. Okay, so how do we get the verifier and how do we prove the correctness there? Option one would be to write V by hand. It's a machine code. We'll just write down a bunch of bytes. Surely that can't be so hard. Um, and also prove uh, correctness of that thing. That means producing some kind of uh, evidence that uh, this statement is derivable. So that's, that's pretty hard to do um, just from scratch. So instead, uh, we write a language on top of that. So we need a higher level proof system to assist in constructing these very low level proofs. And then we also need a higher level programming language in order to assist with this particular proof, which is about um, proving the correctness of a piece of machine code. Okay, so that basically uh, gives us the three components of our architecture. The first component is MM0. That's the actual verifier. Uh, that's uh, what I was calling V before. This is, you, you can think of this as the uh, kernel of your favorite um, proof assistant, um, except that this one is a standalone executable. Uh, and it is a part of the trusted code base here. Uh, MM1 is the proof assistant for MM0. It produces MM0 proofs. Uh, this is un completely unverified. Uh, it does contain a sort of small untrusted kernel, which is a version of MM0, just so that it can understand what's going on. Um, but uh, ultimately, the source of truth, truth is that external verifier for MM0. Uh, and so you can uh, compare this to your favorite proof assistant. And then the third component is uh, MetaMath C, which is a verified compiler, um, or rather verifying compiler. Uh, this is a domain-specific language inside MM1 for producing x86 programs, uh, along with a proof of their correctness. And so you can compare this to something like a program verification logic like Iris, 
plus a compiler, like you a regular C compiler or, or maybe a CompCert verifying compiler, and also code extraction like you would find in Cocker Isabel, except that it's targeting binary instead of source. Um, the input to the, ver the MM0 verifier is actually split into two parts, and these um, go according to whether they are trusted inputs or not. Uh, the trusted input is the MM0 file. This is a specification file. Uh, it's human readable and contains the statement of axioms and assertions. The MMB file is this proof file. This is untrusted. It is not in a human readable format. It is designed for efficient checking by, by the verifier. And this is roughly analogous to those um, compiled proof files um, in other languages. Um, and here I have a, a, a picture of the sort of workflow you work on these MM1 files and the MM1 proof assistant is going to produce MM0 and MMB files that are then sent to the verifier. And uh, you also have to look at the MM0 file to make sure that those statements actually match what you believe. So um, to recap, uh, an MM0 file contains the logic, the definitions, and the theorems that we're trying to prove. The MMB file has the proof. The MM0 verifier takes both of those two files and checks that the MMB file proves the theorems. The MM1 proof assistant reads MM1 files and produces these pairs. And what I'm trying to do is prove the correctness of the machine code for that MM0 verifier. OK, so uh, let me give you an example of what an MM0 file actually looks like. So um, here, uh, we're defining a sort, which, uh, which is called WFF. We define implication, we define negation uh, as primitive constructors, and then we can write down the axioms of propositional, classical propositional logic. We can make some definitions saying, okay, here's what and is, here's what if and only if is, here's what or is, and so on. Um, predicate logic continues in much the same way. We axiomatize for all, uh, and then we can define exists. Uh, we axiomatize equality, give a bunch of axioms, um, defining how predicate logic works uh, and define substitution. And then we can use that to define the actual non-logical axioms. These are the p &O axioms. Um, so for example, this here is the induction axiom. Uh, we add addition, multiplication, and then we axiomatize um, how they operate. And then finally, uh, we can define a couple things. We define uh, one and two define less equal, less than, uh, divides, and primality. And now we can state uh, the Goldbach conjecture. Um, so here, note the lack of proof. This is actually just um, the statement of the proof, or the statement of uh, the theorem that we'd like to be true. So this is a complete MM0 file. It's about 60 lines. And it asserts that Goldbach's conjecture is derivable from the axioms of p &O arithmetic. And as you saw, we basically built everything up from scratch. Um, the correctness theorem for MM0 implies that uh, if the MM0 verifier accepts any proof of this file, then um, Goldbach's conjecture is in fact provable in p &O arithmetic. Okay, so the MM0 verifier uh, is implemented in C. It's about 2,000 lines of code. Um, there are actually several uh, re-implementations of it. Uh, as part of uh, MM1, we need a, a separate version of the verifier inside Rust and Haskell. And the implementation in MetaMath C is uh, in progress. Uh, this uh, verifier is very fast, and so it uh, scales well to large developments. Uh, in particular, um, uh, I'll, I'll say that there's a way to translate uh, MetaMath into MM0. And using that translation, we can verify the entire uh, MetaMath library of about 30,000 proofs in about 200 milliseconds, which is faster even than MetaMath itself. Uh, this being the reference implementation, it takes about uh, eight seconds. And the fastest uh, MetaMath implementation uh, takes about 900 milliseconds. And the difference here has to do with uh, the way the data structures are laid out uh, in the binary file. Uh, and the library of supporting material for this project is actually just a couple milliseconds. 
Um, I am interested in uh, testing this on larger uh, data sets like uh, the FlySpec project or something like this. So uh, if you have a large uh, proof data set, please see me. Um, it's often difficult to get these things out of other systems. So uh, it is very, very useful to have um, someone sort of on the other side to assist with these sorts of translation problems. Um, proof terms in the binary format are, are essentially fully elaborated and fully deduplicated terms. And as a result of that, you can get a basically linear time verification. And the proof size is comparable to compiled proof formats in other languages like Metamath files or uh, O lean files from lean and VO files for cock. Um, so the MM0 formal system is roughly the intersection of Metamath and second order logic, which means that it's actually easy to translate between Metamath and MM0, as well as from MM0 to uh, second order logic or higher order logic. Um, so these are the existing translations. So I have a translation from Metamath to MM0, from MM0 to a bespoke implementation of uh, HOL. And from that, uh, this is sort of an intermediate language, which then translates to open theory and also to lean. Um, and the uh, translator, as I said, has been used to losslessly translate the entire uh, ZFC library into MM0. Um, and uh, the HOL, I basically have a, an implementation of HOL which uh, checks this uh, correctness. Um, the lean port, uh, so if you uh, compose all of those translations, you get a translation from Metamath to lean. And Metamath has a big library and lean has a big library, so this is actually kind of nice. Uh, we can now take all of Metamath and stick it inside of lean. Um, and you have to do some alignment after that in order to make those theorems useful. But uh, after doing that, uh, these are not difficult theorems, you can prove a statement like this. So this is a proof of Dirichlet's theorem uh, from only the axioms of lean. Um, and uh, it was proven using the Metamath library because there's a proof of Dirichlet's theorem inside Metamath. Um, so I consider this a great uh, successful application of proof translation. Um, in large. Uh, and uh, work on the, the reverse translation is underway. Okay, so uh, the proof assistant, uh, Metamath 1, is an extension of MM0. As, as we saw, MM0 didn't have a way to say proofs. It, it just, you just state theorems, you don't prove them. Uh, MM1 adds a way for you to say, oh, and by the way, the proof is this. Um, and it also adds a Turing complete metaprogramming slash scripting language uh, which is uh, based on scheme. Uh, there are two implementations of this uh, in Haskell and Rust. Um, the Haskell one is deprecated. Um, and this provides uh, syntax highlighting, live error diagnostics, and so on uh, using uh, the language server protocol. Okay, so um, Recall that we were trying to get these two parts. We needed the verifier and we needed the correctness theorem. In order to prove the correctness theorem, we built this uh, proof system, this proof assistant for MM0. But now let's look at how to uh, get the verifier, uh, the actual uh, code, uh, and also uh, to prove facts about that at the same time. So that is what Metamath C is about. So, uh, as I said, MM1 is, has a Turing complete programming language inside it. Uh, so, within that, there is a function called MMC compile that you give it um, a name and you give it um, some program text. So, it takes an, a C like program with uh, an embedded specification um, and it compiles it down to machine code and produces a proof that the program meets its specification. Uh, and Metamath C describes the input grammar of this prog here. Um, and uh, I should mention that uh, this is still in early development. So, uh, but uh, the plans for this are quite well laid out. Okay, so uh, as an example here, I'm gonna prove that two plus two equals four using computation on you know my actual laptop. Um, in order to do that, uh, 
we're going to use two functions. This is sort of a Rube Goldbergian way to do it, but we'll just say uh, we have uh, a function called adder, and this is going to add things. So this takes in two uh, variables, x and y, they're 32-bit, and produces a 64-bit result uh, and um, a proof that x plus y equals red. Uh, and then main is going to take no arguments and pr prove that 2 plus 2 equals 4. So uh, if we were doing this in a, in a functional programming language, um, it might look something like this. So adder is taking x and y. And well, for ret, it's just going to return x and y. Uh, the types don't quite match up, uh, so we're going to cast it. Uh, this exclamation point here indicates uh, that um, we're going to produce a proof that this thing actually has that type. Uh, and if it doesn't have that type, we're actually going to crash the program. We're going to make it uh, exit out with a non-zero exit code. And therefore, we will know that whatever this thing, whatever the specification was planning to prove, it didn't happen. Um, and then the equality is just REFL here because this is x plus y, roughly. Um, and uh, for the main program, we're going to call adder with arguments 2 and 2. It's going to return a value. We should hope that this value is 4. And then it also produces a proof that 2 plus 2 equals that value. So now uh, we assert that value equals 4. Um, so we get this. And then, uh, and then we just compose them by transitivity, and we return a proof of 2 plus 2 equals 4. Uh, so this is uh, what this actually looks like in uh, so the outer language here, where you see the import and the do, that's metameth1. And then inside this do block, we have that lispy um, language where we can uh, write programs. And then we're calling here the MMC compile. And then inside this, um, this quoted lisp literal, we have uh, this different language, this C language. So here, this is the uh, metamath C language, and we're going to define a procedure called adder and another procedure called main. Uh, and adder takes x and y, returns ret, and a proof that x plus y equals ret. Um, it does so first. It's going to prove so that the cast um, needed a proof. This proof was a proof that it did not overflow. Um, now, you can actually prove that from this context, but uh, because I'm being lazy here, I'm just going to assert, uh, which means we're going to crash the program if it's not the case. Uh, and then we get uh, the value uh, ret, and uh, ret eek is going to be assigned to the value of this assignment. And unlike in C, here an assignment actually returns a proof of equality of the variable being assigned to the value that it was assigned. So this is actually going to end up being a proof that x plus y equals ret. And so we just pass them both out. And then main uh, calls adder with 2 and 2. It gets a proof that uh, it gets a value, val, and a proof that 2 plus 2 equals val. It asserts that val equals 4. And now h2 is a proof that val equals 4. And we compose them with transitivity. And we return that, which means that we've returned a proof of 2 plus 2 equals 4. So that's the code. We pass that to MMC compile, and it produces machine code. And it also produces uh, some other things that I'll show in the next slide. Um, in particular, it produces uh, adder, which is a string literal, uh, inside uh, the MM1 data structures in memory. And so we call export string, and now it's going to actually write it to a file. And so now we have uh, adder. Maybe we'll have to mark this as executable. And then we can call this thing. Uh, and if we call it and it returns uh, and it doesn't crash, then we know that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and we can pat ourselves on the back. So when we call that uh, tactic, uh, what it actually produces are these uh, definitions and theorems. So it produces uh, the adder, which is the actual, this is just a string literal containing a bunch of binary, which is the actual um, ELF file. And it proves that it's an ELF file, which is valid. And it proves that this function always terminates. And also that if it were to be executed uh, and uh, that execution succeeds, then 2 plus 2 equals 4. All right. Um, so uh, just um, 
to go over some of the, the highlights of the, the design of this inner language here, um, it's basically a C-like structure, uh, heavily influenced by Rust, um, but it's also uh, influenced by um, the HOL and, and functional programming in general. And so there is a way that you can just say, uh, my function is pure, and then it ac actually produces a HOL function, um, which describes the semantics of that function. Um, even if you're using global variables and other things, it'll just do a sort of state monad thing. Um, currently, this only supports uh, terminating programs, um, but uh, conceivably, um, the architecture can be modified to do partial correctness uh, proofs as well. Um, the, the whole thing is based on, on separation logic. So those, those uh, variables like H and so on, these are actually separating propositions in the logic. Um, and uh, the type checker here, this is essentially a soft typing system. So uh, the type checker is a mechanism for tracking and supplying typing proofs where needed. And you can actually sort of split a, uh, a variable from its type. And then you can pass around the fact that this variable has a certain type, which can be useful. Um, and uh, types can be consumed by function calls and so on. So that actually makes it a lot more like a Rust-like linear logic. Um, but uh, most interestingly, I would say compared to most programming languages, this thing is designed to be proof producing from day one. So if the program compiles, then it's correct and you have a proof of correctness. All right, so um, the overall progress of this uh, project, uh, everything uh, that I've discussed uh, can be found in the MM0 repo. Um, this has uh, informal specifications of all of these three languages. Uh, there is a MM0C verifier. Um, the translations are in the Haskell verifier and uh, the MM1 proof assistant in Rust is pretty stable. Uh, we have a, um, this, uh, this MMC tactic is, is still a work in progress. Um, and then uh, there's a bunch of uh, proof files. So PO has a library of theorems in PO arithmetic. Um, MM0.MM0 is the formal specification of MM0 inside its own language. And uh, this is the specification of x86. Uh, and verifier.MM0 has this end goal theorem that uh, you know I'd like to be proving. All right, so uh, to recap, uh, the goal here was to prove the correctness of a real theorem prover. Now, uh, MM1 is um, a, a nascent theorem prover, so um, I don't know how real we can call it, but at least uh, we have translations so that we can actually get stuff from, for example, Lean uh, into MM0, and uh, I hope to really expand that web of translations to uh, all of the others. Um, so, uh, I define a formal specification language, uh, write a verifier for that language, um, prove the correctness of the verifier using the uh, proof assistant in order to help it with constructing the proofs and using the programming language to help with writing the machine code. Um, so in conclusion, MM0 is a principled attempt to address the problem of bootstrapping trust in a theorem prover. Um, and I would like to think that it's pretty good. Um, so thank you very much. And I guess I can take questions. Yes, thank you. Very, thank you very much for this uh, exciting work that you presented here. So please come with questions in the chat. Uh, in the time being, while the questions come in, I had a, uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, uh, two different things. The one was when you when you mentioned that the two plus two equals four example. What does that mean? Is that um, to uh, the correctness of the chip? down there that uh, so so that that is a proof of um let's see so you, uh here we have a, a where the goal is to prove two plus two equals four by actually running uh, a program right the the program yeah. by virtue of its running on an actual machine has proven two plus two equals four in our meta understanding of what's happening Right, but how, how to say, is, is that a proof that boils down to definition of plus via the successor function? Or is um, it so what's, it's, now what's that, actually uh, derived inside um, piano arithmetic is, uh, 
is this theorem here. So uh, it's a proof of two plus two equals four, but it has an assumption. And within uh, the logic, you can't actually discharge this assumption. I mean, you could in principle if you were to actually play through all of the uh, execution steps, because it does understand those execution steps. So you could, but the whole point here is that you can actually then run this thing on a real machine. And then you just trust that um, the, I mean, this is essentially what uh, the specification of x86 is supposed to uh, be accomplishing, is that right. we're assuming that this is actually a specification which is correct to real hardware so that when you actually run it, uh, that matches what's going on here. So you can imagine um, a uh, reflective kernel where you sort of pull that assumption back into the kernel and then uh, just have a way within the system to be able to turn uh, this um, theorem here into just a proof of two plus two equals four, where this assumption is discharged by some magical um, primitive. Right, thank you. There is a question by David Finmeyer. David, will you ask? So I read out the question and why using machine code x86 and not an intermediate verification language, for instance, Boogie? Um, well, so the intermediate verification language is actually MetaMath C in this, in this uh, setup. Uh, x86 is used because uh, ultimately what we need to do is run a program on an actual machine. And that machine implements some architecture uh, some instruction set architecture. And uh, in my case, I, I have a, a, an x86 machine, and I think a lot of people do. So uh, I targeted x86 specifically because it is uh, widespread. Um, but uh, everything else is just reduced down to that. Uh, but you can, you can do proofs at a higher level of abstraction, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Next question, Peter Gibson. You want to ask Peter? Uh, yeah. Um, does correctness require that your Intel CPU in your actual laptop is verified if you run it yourself and try to claim that it's correct? Um, yeah, so that, that is a very good point. Um, this is, uh, I'd like to lower this down even further, uh, but in order to get past the instruction set architecture level, you have to actually have a specification of the hardware. And this is actually quite difficult to get because most of this is not open source. So I see a lot of uh, good things coming out of that community, things like RISC-V and, and uh, open hardware standards and that, those sorts of things. Uh, but uh, right now, this is, I think, um, the, the best uh, middle point for, for aiming at here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question, Teresa Kruse. Teresa? Yeah, it's more like an abstract theoretical question, like regarding if we have now a verifier for the proof system in a way. So if you think it like one step further, would be like the next step to have like a verification system for this verification system and like building one of the other. Do you have some thoughts on that topic? Well, so the idea uh, with this is that everything, uh, so like MM1, is producing proofs at the end. So we don't need to know that MM1 itself works. It produces whatever it wants to, and then that goes through the verifier. And so the, the idea is that the kernel is the only thing that needs to be trusted. Um, a reflective kernel actually allows you to do a lot more in this regard with more interesting proof formats that you sort of build on the fly. Um, but uh, for the basic stuff, um, here it's just everything is producing a proof object and that proof object gets checked. So th this I think is a good way to, to factor what needs to be trusted slash proved in the, at the next meta level um, and what doesn't. Um, and the user interface for the most part doesn't need to be um, correct, um, only the display. Thank you. Next is from Shun Tian. Um, hi, Mario. Uh, I want to ask, uh, can the project uh, kick ML somehow shorten your efforts when dealing with the machine code instructions like the X86 
And for example, I don't know, maybe you can implement the MM0 directly in KKML language. And uh, of course, you immediately benefit from KKML by extending yeah. your work into a different uh, yeah. other machine uh, architecture. So, um, so as far as I understand, and, and I, I could be wrong, uh, but KKML is uh, not uh, equipped to handle um, theorems with uh, these sorts of things, where you have proofs just sort of in the code. Um, the, the, the actual KML system compiles straight ML, yeah. right? And I, I think that it's, it's sort of a, uh, a downside of uh, a lot of these systems that, that uh, they're based on programming languages and programming languages were not designed originally for proving. Uh, so this is really um, an attempt to look at uh, an, a proof system within like where, where the, the, the proving and the code are actually one thing, right? It's, there's, they're not separated. Um, maybe that helps. Right, thank you. Since we should come to a close, last question by uh, Joseph Urban. Uh, hi, hi, Mario. Uh, so it's great work. Uh, I'm wondering if you said you can align the lean uh, and the metamath numbers uh, somehow. Like th this is a pretty non trivial task. Like if you import the library, how do you align it? So, so it's surprisingly easy. Um, the okay. basic uh, thing is uh, lean's natural numbers are initial by definition. Uh, they are they're initial within the space of natural number objects, um, and metamath natural numbers are initial because they, there's a theorem that says uh, that natural numbers satisfy uh, the the induction. Uh, theorem. So uh, you combine those and they're isomorphic and that's it. And oh, then okay. you just uh, prove that that isomorphism translates uh, metamath zero to lean zero and metamath one to lean one and that sort of thing. So uh, everything just sort of works like that. And a lot of it is just unfolding definitions and then it's just trivial. So, so it works in this particular case, but it's not like you have a general method for aligning everything in metamath with everything in lean. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, so metamath definitions are on on the surface they're they're uh, some first order logic thing, and then you unfold that in met, in uh, lean, and it's a first order logic in lean uh, statement. And uh, for if it's uh, things like finiteness and primes and and uh, Zero and one and natural numbers, all of the like all of the things that were involved in Dirichlet's theorem, um, they're they're literally the same thing because it's, I mean, when you talk about finiteness in one language or another, uh, they might slightly differ, but they're still because they have this common uh, concept of what finiteness is, they are actually saying the same thing, and so you just prove that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the the proofs are all very short. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Right, thank you very much. Thank you very much again also Mario for this exciting